Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna make a very simple fondant or gum paste rose. I'm actually just using fondant in this video. You can also use gum paste. And I'll actually, a lot of times what I do is, especially if I need it to dry really quickly, I will need a little bit of gum paste powder into my fondant to make it just dry and set up a little faster. So I rolled that piece of fondant out to about, oh, I'm not good with measuring. So let's say if you were to stack three sheets of paper, on top of themselves. That's about what you would get, maybe just two, because you really do want it thin so it looks really like petals. And then that excess piece that I didn't need there, I actually placed into a Ziploc container or you can wrap it in plastic wrap just to keep it from drying out while you work. So I use that cutter there and I'll attach that link in the details of this video, but that is specifically for roses. And I cut out two, because that's the size I like to work with, but you could also just use one. You could do three or four if you want a really large open rose. And now I've got my piece of fondant laid out on a foam board. This is specifically used for creating gum paste and fondant flowers. You can find these at most of your hobby stores or cake decorating supply stores or online. And then I've got a ball tool there, a fondant tool. Um, it's got a a large ball on one end, a small on the other. You wanna use the large one to kind of thin out the fondant a little bit more and really make the end of your petals paper thin or tissue paper thin. Um, so I'm just kind of slowly rolling it back and forth the edges. I sped this video up a little bit. So this is obviously not as fast as you would wanna go. I thin out the whole petal, but I just really focus on that edge there, getting it nice and thin. And you're gonna do this on both sides of your cutter so like both sides of where it's cut and then both pieces that you've already cut out again you can cut out as many or as few of these as you need so lay that one to the side and again proceed with the second piece in the exact same thing now as far as the ball tool this is a plastic one you can buy this set of fondant tools almost any craft store it's really i think it's the wilton brand it's very simple it has a lot of different tools inside that kit um, there's, but you can get different size ball tools. So you can kind of look around online and see which ones you prefer. There's metal ones with wooden handles. I mean, just kind of your preference there. But you do want a larger one, not a smaller one, because the smaller ones can tend to tear on those large petals. So now that they're both cut out, I'm gonna fold them in half lengthwise. Now I am actually folding that so that the part that was laying facing up that I was working on the petals is on the outside of that fold. So as you can see with this piece, I'm flipping it over and then folding it so that the pieces that I was flattening out and working with are actually on the outside. And then I'm just pressing down the center where the crease is to make sure they really stick and stay. You could add a little bit of water um, into that crease before you fold it, but usually this is enough. So you can see there it's rather thin. So now I've got a little bit of water here and a clean paintbrush. And remember when you're using paintbrushes or tools on fondant work or cake, make sure that it is clean and food safe and has not been used on anything else. I dab just a little bit of water throughout that piece. You do not want this dripping wet. You just want it tacky. So just a little bit of water goes a long way. Now I'm rolling that rather tightly. Um, nothing too crazy, I'm not pressing real hard, but you don't want any gaps either. So I'm just slowly rolling that up with a little bit of water to keep it in place. And I'm making sure that as I roll it, the petals really align where I want them to be. And then I just press at the end and grab my second piece. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing, add a little bit of water, and then continue to wrap it around that already existing rose. Um, this is just gonna create a much bigger, fuller rose. And this is the size I probably make the most often. So now at this point, I mean, yes, you have a lot of petals, but it's kind of tall. So I'm pinching to make almost like a handle for myself um, and to pull off the excess. And then I'm just very gently folding down all those different petals. I'm pulling away. Some of them I'm doing a little pinch. so They have a little bit of different shape to them. So really take a picture of a real rose or bring a real rose into your kitchen and look at it and just move those petals around until you feel like it looks realistic and the size and openness that you want it to be. Now, this excess here that I've pinched off, I'm literally gonna take that completely off and then just press that down because I don't want that big piece of fondant sticking into my cake. Now, I can actually see here as I rolled it that there was a couple of areas that I really want it to be a little tighter, so I just dabbed a little bit of water with a paintbrush to where I want it tighter and then just kind of pressed around the outside to make it stick 
I didn't want it too open on certain areas. And then continuing, you could actually play with these petals for a very long time until it is to your liking. So just play with it as much as you want and then set it down to dry. And sorry, the lighting's so bad. You'll see a better image here shortly. But to let it dry, I actually use an old egg carton. This is like a plastic top to an egg carton and I have it dusted with powdered sugar. It does a great job of supporting the flower without bending the petals and that's it. On the cake picture you're about to see, I did paint it with some dust and some gold because they wanted a metallic look, and that's the finished product. If these videos are helpful to you and you need more information on how you can learn and create and bake and decorate your own cakes and start your own side hustle or cake business, comment below and let me know. I can help you out no matter where you live. We can do it all virtual. Thanks so much for watching.